We are now going to design the duct system. In the TAPS Commander, under Ventilation, click on the drop-down menu for Ventilation Pilot, pulling up the bottom menu. All the components to design your ventilation project may be selected here. We select Ceiling Diffusers and select the first diffuser in our database. In Attributes, we can change our CFM values, pressure loss and dimension, type, material, etc. It is important here to add a value that may be predominant on the project. Here we use 220 CFMs. We are now going to free place our first diffuser. The command bar is asking to select start point. Next command bar is asking for the Z elevation bottom edge. Our elevation height here is 96 inches. The software is asking to select the layer management for all diffusers. Our first diffuser is now placed. In the array window, we have set up a pattern of two rows and three columns. The other diffusers for the room are now placed. Using a move command, the diffusers are moved within the room. We are now copying the diffusers in this room to place elsewhere. We will now place the balance of the diffusers. The placing of diffusers you can see is being accomplished through the standard AutoCAD commands. After the diffusers are in place, under the CATS commander, under Edit Duct, we select Properties. The window appears with all the properties that can be changed such as description, CFM, and the diffuser pressure drop. This allows the user to establish data based upon the air distribution devices of their preference. After all diffusers are in place, in the CATS commander under components, we are looking to select a fire damper. A window appears showing a fire damper. Here, we can insert dimensional data for the device, length of sleeve, etc. We're going to place the fire damper 12 inches from the corner near the door. X, Y, and Z dimensions are requested by the software. The device is placed. Using the right mouse click, you can rotate the fire damper if needed. We will now begin locating the center line from the center line of our fire damper by using the AutoCAD Commander line. We are now showing the center line of our supply duct on the drawing. We continue extending our center line to its selected location. It is important to pass beyond the last diffuser with your duct center line. Once our center line is completed, under the CATS Commander, under Ventilation, select Under Trace Line. Repair Trace Line Global. After selecting the center line, we are creating a trace line. Now we are connecting our diffusers automatically to our trace line. In the AutoCAD command, we are asked to select the diffuser. In this case, we select all diffusers. Next, in the AutoCAD command, we are asked to select the trace line in which the diffusers will be connecting. In the AutoCAD command, we are asked whether to connect the diffuser on the top or the side. We will select the top. And now, all connections between the duct center line and the diffuser are completed. In the AutoCAD command, we are prompted to select the lines to be deleted. In the CATS commander, we select Automatic Duct Generation. Under Dimensioning, we will select Round and decide to let the software calculate the sizing of our round duct according to our velocity of 800 feet per minute. We change 600 to 800 in the window. We are now going to assign the round ductwork by highlighting the entire duct system. The software recognizes our center line. Now all the information is displayed in yellow as the round duct system. We will now select the ducts to be converted from round to rectangular.
The automatic duct generator window has a tab to the right which is labeled Assistant. This is nothing more than a duct calculator. We will assign our rectangular duct height. We will use the defaulted 18 inch dimension. In width, we will select zero. The software will calculate the duct width according to the velocity. We now select the lines to be changed to rectangular duct. They become purple in color. As the air quantity reduces, we now change our duct height to 12 inches, width remaining zero. We select these lines now. We can now close the duct generator if we choose. We are now assigning our duct system to a three-dimensional drawing by selecting a start point at the fire damper. Cat's ventilation professional preferences appears. Under construction, we can set the maximum length of duct, round pipe, tolerance for fit angle, and rotation angle of round shapes. The others are software defaults. Under the flange, we have our settings on default. Under automatic duct generation, we have the length of transition set at a maximum of 30 degree offset. Length of rectangular to round transition is 12 inches and a maximum connection of flexible tube of 36 inches. The next tab is manufacturing. All specifications are set to SMACNA standards. Select OK. A window appears with a flexible layer management. We will select the layer for supply duct. The software will now create the three-dimensional drawing. The duct size width is now created and we have previously selected our duct height. We will now copy the fire damper. Relocate five feet to the left to create our return air duct penetration. We will now draw our duct center line for the return similar to as we did for the supply duct. If your input selections are complete, the CATS Ventilation Professional Preferences window will appear and will establish the layer for our return air duct system. In the CATS Commander, we will now select a return air register for the duct opening. In Attributes for the return air grill, we will revise the value to 1200 CFM. Select OK. You will then select the type of connection to connect the return duct. Select Link, select OK. Select the end of the duct to place the return grill. The flexible management layer appears, prompting us to select the layer for this component. Repeat the procedure for the other side of the return. We will now view the 3D design.